lions are not the only predators at work. Hyenas, too, are swift to take advantage of the surplus source of food. There is no killing bite. Their victims are disemboweled and die within a few minutes. In turn, their nourishment will benefit their demanding offspring. The cheetah is mindful of other predators that are direct threats to her cubs. Moving dens is risky. Lionesses are very tolerant with their own cubs. But savagely intolerant of any other predator's offspring, relocating is never safe when there are predators around. Only one cheetah cub can be moved at a time and this leaves those waiting all too vulnerable. It's one life lost. Only half of all cheetah cubs make it to three months. The extermination of the competition. Like the cheetah cubs slain by the first pride, the hyena cubs are potential targets. They are not powerful hunters now, but from a lion's brutal perspective, they are rivals. Babysitting adult hyenas are too few and have no choice but to flee. The offspring underground will have to trust in their luck, but it's all bad. This is what it takes to be a successful lion. The bachelor males assert their dominance. The hyenas abandon their compromised den. Only the scavengers are left to pick over what once was a thriving pack. To be a king, bloody wars must be fought and won. <laughs> Instinct drives the lion, unleashing a fearsome power. It seems unclouded by notions of cruelty, remorse or guilt. But it does know with terrifying certainty what it takes to be a lion. On the African felt, successful lions take what they need. Brutality is a way of life.
And this is the Holy Grail for our two nomads. A pride of lionesses with no males to defend it. Impending violence is in the air. The lions are welcomed with open claws. get hit by friendly fire. Despite the aggression, the lions will gain nothing by fighting to kill. This is the way order is established. Lions know when to back down when outnumbered. His partner's grimace indicates that he's testing whether the females are in heat. The incoming males would kill young cubs. But these are more than a year old and safe for now. For the price of a few scars, the males now have their own pride. It's the end of the dry season in Tanzania's Serengeti National Park. Times are tough, but scars heal and the great herds are marching ever closer. After a few days, pride life finally settles down. The lions begin their courtship. They rarely conceive on their first estrus after a takeover. They need assurance that the new lions are strong enough to protect the pride and that they are here to stay. They mate frequently over four days. The former nomads are now the pride protectors. These juvenile males, bachelors to be, enjoy all the advantages of a stable pride for now. In time, they will take on the mantle that every successful lion must bear. Like their new protectors, they will become nomads until old enough to take a pride of their own. Being pride protectors has its benefits. The females do most of the work. But why kill when cheetahs will do it for you?
not hungry enough to take the kill, the lion breaks off his chase. Although prey is scarce now, the pride has been successfully hunting on the outer reaches of their territory and sometimes targeting unusual prey. The big cats claim a vantage point in acacia trees. The males hang back, too conspicuous in an ambush. One well-aimed kick from an adult giraffe could kill Africa's biggest cat. But at this time of year, hunger outweighs the risk of a flying defensive hoof. Young giraffes rely on their mothers to lead them out of trouble. The hunters change tactics. Their prey follows suit. A giraffe mother's next best defense is to hide her babies in the undergrowth. becomes a deadly game of hide and seek. A young giraffe is too exposed. Its mother wasn't strong enough to say. She'll be forced to abandon the acacia forest to give her future offspring a chance of survival. The lions, too, are forced farther out to widen their net. Baboons rarely feature on their hit list. Adult males armed with big teeth defend their troops. Hunger is an all-powerful incentive. Baboons are vulnerable while foraging on or near the ground. They use their numbers to deter attackers. They can mob and injure big cats, 
but an empty belly prompts bold action. Her only chance of a meal is a lone monkey caught off guard. A single baboon may sustain one lioness, but only if she keeps it for herself. Screams of alarm give the game away. The lioness and her prize are mobbed after a few scant mouthfuls. The most severe part of the dry season is almost over. The pride has one last prey animal in its sights before the rains. Buffalo are among the few options remaining in the pride's territory. They are the biggest and most dangerous creatures the lions take on. Males are not built to run down prey. Their size and mane make them cumbersome hunters. But when hunger forces them to act, they take on an animal three times their weight. initiates the attack. The cue for the male to strike. Success will provide for the whole pride, but the risks are great. The buffalo hasn't given up the fight. The herd starts a counter-attack. The lion's time is running out. The mighty buffalo herd rallies against their attackers. The lion's power and iron will triumph.
no Pride member goes hungry with prey of this size. It's a respite in the last days of the dry season, but salvation is on the horizon. Transformation is at hand. The sky begins to bruise as storm clouds cover the Pride's territory. Wildebeest follow rain clouds in anticipation of new green shoots. Relief at last. The herd's front runners arrive in the lion's territory. The adolescent males, the bachelors to be, are tolerated by the new pride males, but they'll soon be forced to find their own pride. The invader males are now fully integrated into the pride. One savors the rich pickings to come. The other does what a lion does most of all. It's the start of the wet season overabundance, and just as well, as there are now more mouths to feed. In a secluded acacia scrub, our lead lioness gives birth to the new male's offspring, three and a half months after conception. She seeks seclusion at this time to minimize the risk to her newborns. Her cubs are born totally helpless and it can take 11 days for their eyes to open. These cubs are lucky. They will have no other cubs in competition for milk when they're old enough to join the pride. But to get sustenance, they have to find their mother's teat. The oncoming herds of wanderers are now pouring into the pride's territory. The lines are spoiled for choice. Pride males rarely hunt for themselves. With their manes, they are far too conspicuous to potential prey. Their main function is to defend the pride against rival bachelors. The numbers of the arriving herds are astonishing, but that number is about to swell dramatically. Thousands of baby wildebeest are delivered within three weeks of each other.
This tactic overwhelms predators and ensures that a large percentage of calves survive. With helpless prey so plentiful, the lion's stalk is almost redundant. and mouse Serengeti style. The lionesses are not hungry, but such easy prey is hard to resist. Lions are not the only predators at work. Hyenas, too, are swift to take advantage of the surplus source of food. There is no killing bite. Their victims are disemboweled and die within a few minutes. In turn, their nourishment will benefit their demanding offspring. The cheetah is mindful of other predators that are direct threats to her cubs. Moving dens is risky. Lionesses are very tolerant with their own cubs. But savagely intolerant of any other predator's offspring. Relocating is never safe when there are predators around. Only one cheetah cub can be moved at a time and this leaves those waiting all too vulnerable. Only half of all cheetah cubs make it to three months. Two males provide a more secure home for their offspring. Lion cubs' hunting skills are usually honed by play. Older males spend their rest periods a little less actively. Lions relax up to 21 hours a day. The pride's maturing young males, the bachelors-to-be, are keeping a low profile. The adult males will not tolerate their presence much longer. These sub-adult males will leave their pride and form a bachelor coalition when they reach about two and a half years old. At five years old, they will look for a pride of their own. It's a big step. 
in an unforgiving world without the support of their pride behind them. And it's getting drier. There are no farewells. They must travel beyond the scent marked boundaries of their mother's territory and into the ranges of neighboring prides. Now they are nomads and trespassers forced on the move to keep out of trouble. The two new young bachelors take time to cement their strong bond. This head rubbing relates to scent sharing, another thing that unites them. But what really unites them is strength in numbers. They need each other. They also need food, something their pride females have always provided. In this new and unknown part of the felt, there is prey. But the young lion's inexperience counts against them. The bachelor duo will have to start small. Ostriches lay eggs in the open. The female on guard has no choice but to move on as the boys feast. It's a modest meal, but better than nothing. In time, the young wanderers develop the distinctive adult mane. Older and more powerful, they are still intruders at another pride's waterhole. This male is not old enough to be alone. His pride must be somewhere near. Travelling at the tail of the mass of dark bodies are the tan and lithe Thompson's gazelles. These grazers find sustenance in grasses others have abandoned, but they are still fair game. The resident pride is ruled by a single male, and as ever, it's the females who do most of the work. Ambush is always preferable when the terrain presents perfect cover. Young gazelles that can't read the warning signs run into trouble.
The lioness is unaware of new males, the bachelor duo, in her pride's territory and takes her catch off to eat. But the boys are hungry. Pride lions don't share food, females or territory, with outsiders. The lioness is alone, her pride some distance away. She is wary of this unknown, intruding male. And there are two of them. There are always others who will deal with the leftovers. Another clan of hyenas and their pups also have a den in the resident pride's territory. The pups are boisterous and playful. Even at this young age, they have a voice. Their distinctive cackling howl is well developed, but this is not the time or place to advertise their presence. The resident pride has already ousted its sub-adult males, but one returns to scrounge some of the kill. It's a big mistake. Once lowly sub-adults themselves, our bachelor males are now four years old and make a formidable team. They have yet to encounter the resident pride, but are approaching a key milestone in their maturity. The extermination of the competition. Like the cheetah cubs slain by the first pride, the hyena cubs are potential targets. They are not powerful hunters now, but from a lion's brutal perspective, they are rivals. Babysitting adult hyenas are too few and have no choice but to flee. The offspring underground will have to trust in their luck, but it's all bad. This is what it takes to be a successful lion. The bachelor males assert their dominance. The hyenas abandon their compromised den. Only the scavengers are left to pick over what once was a thriving pack.
These impressive big cats, now in their prime, have one more goal to achieve. Take over. This lioness, part of the stable resident pride, senses imminent rain. A lone pride male is not powerful enough to protect his extended family. A lioness with new cubs has most to fear and most to lose from a takeover. And the bachelors are primed for action. One bachelor breaks off towards a rocky outcrop or copy. His partner stays on the felt. The lioness must hide her cubs. It's two against one. The ruling king knows he's beaten. Without a pride, his future is bleak. Other members of the resident pride make their getaway. On the copy now, the second bachelor moves closer to the cubs. A killer in kindergarten. does what she's compelled to do, defend her young at any cost. is merely a diversion. Lions have no adoption strategy and to ensure the future of their own bloodline, they will kill without pity. The first bachelor leads the mother farther away. The job is done. It's too late for the lioness. Her cubs are gone. There is no more she can do.
These deaths are simply stages in the bachelor's lives, events that must occur to guarantee their own future. A future bound with a new pride whose stability the intruders have utterly destroyed. In time, the females will bear cubs. The cycle of apparent brutality that punctuates a lion's life will continue. Success depends on sudden, effective, and deadly violence for the sake of a prize. It may seem like brutal killing, but for a big cat, that's what it takes to be a lion. What does it take to be a lion? The king of the African felt. Allegiances must be forged. Families protected. Competitors wiped out. <laughs>